Yes. Okay. How are you today? I'm so good. I'm so good. <laughs> I'm so you know, happy. I, I actually, yeah, me too. I, so I actually, I cut my bangs recently. And <laughs> when I don't do oh. them, which is pretty much every day, I look like Jesse Tanner from Full House. It's like <laughs> this like weird 90s thing. So, oh, I love it. <laughs> I so I did great. them today. So hopefully it doesn't really look like that. But yeah. anyways, it's good to see you. How, yeah, how's your day? Yeah. Oh, my day is good. It's just so hot. It's unexpectedly yeah. hot today, so yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sweating. But yeah, other than that, I'm really happy. I'm just so excited that we finally connect and then we are able to, you know, um, collaborate together and yeah. then, you know, talk about, you know, um, sex health, you know, bedroom problems. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. I know we have a half yes. an hour, so we got to like get there <laughs> but uh yeah yeah um okay so let's get started um mm -hmm. i know that we have a couple of topics that we really want to talk about like um you know uh painful sex for example and the cause of it and then um the main thing uh, i think that we want to get started with is about you know uh, how to uh, ask for what you want and what you like in the bedroom yeah absolutely yeah. um so yeah, so a little bit about painful sex. Uh, so <laughs> what I do, so I, I started a company called Onut uh, yes. because I was having deep pelvic pain during mm. sex. And I didn't even know how to, I didn't have any words around it when it mm. was happening. I just knew yeah. that when penetration went too deep, I, mm. it not only physically hurt, but I also mm. felt emotionally broken around it. Yeah. And finally... I got to a point in a very unhealthy place in my life where I, I needed to do something because my doctors wouldn't help me and, and I couldn't find any resources and I couldn't find any products. Uh, most of the products were geared towards men's pleasure, not yes. female discomfort. Like I couldn't mm -hmm. find anything for female discomfort. Yeah. So, uh, so I was like, nah, I need to do something. <laughs> so, so I did. My gosh. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I, although I don't have it, but I have mm -hmm. heard, you know, different um, friends of mine have had it. So I know that it, it's not something that everybody's comfortable to talk about. Yeah. And that, that's also why a lot of, you know, the business that don't know, you know, what the customer wants. So I'm really glad to see owner when I first saw it. I think it's really cool. Um, so that's totally like, I am really excited to hear the story. I think it's definitely very empowering and it's a yeah. good subject to mention. Yeah. So one of the questions that a lot of people have is why is sex painful? Mm -hmm. And there are so many reasons, but first and foremost, I just want to say that sex doesn't have to be painful and because we're, our culture teaches us that sex is painful, that pain is normal, or that we're supposed to deal with it, or that it's all in our heads. And really, it's actually something that is very much worth solving that we don't have to push away. So yes. often we just push it away and say like, oh, this is not a big problem. Meanwhile, the rest of our lives start to be affected. Mm -hmm. So the main causes of, 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 so there's two, it breaks down into two categories. There's, there's primary or superficial pain, uh, dyspnea. Dyspnea is the word for pain during sex. So primary dyspnea, and then there's deep dyspnea. So primary is like pain at entry. So, and that could be burning, it could be stabbing, it could be that you feel like you're hitting a wall and nothing's going in. <laughs> that is a very yeah. common one. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of that, so that's, that's like vaginismus and vulvodynia, um, vulvar vestibuli, certain things like that. And then deep dyspnea. So that's, that's when, um, when there's a collision with the rear wall of the vagina. So it could be collision with the cervix. It could be collision further back. But that causes, everything is so compact. <laughs> yeah. So you've got the, the uterus right there, the bladder right mm -hmm. there. You've yes. got so many things <laughs> like really tight together that yes, even exactly. if it's not like immediate pain against something, it mm -hmm. jostles everything in the area. So if you have like a bladder infection, that could cause a lot of pain during sex. Um, so, so that's, that's the deep dyspnea idea. And so what, what Ona does is it, it's like a bumper that's worn at the base of a penetrating partner. So it's like penetrating partner. And then there are rings. I should go grab one because that's okay. Um, <laughs> yes. There are rings that go around. I'm like, this is my company. I should have these everywhere. Um, yeah, they look like little donuts. 
and Me then too. Uh, they have very cute color and uh, and then yeah I, I remember seeing i think it's super cool yeah and, and what that does it allows you to incrementally adjust mm -hmm. during penetration to figure out what feels good for both partners and yeah. kind of what we'll be talking about in a little bit is how to advocate for ourselves in the bedroom because mm -hmm. it's it's amazing like we're completely naked physically we're in our most vulnerable state. Our like legs are who knows where, <laughs> and all of a sudden, our mouth. That's so true. It, it's just like we can't mm -hmm. say what we want, mm -hmm. and so and so. I, I it, it's really what Ona does. Also, is it, it it creates this thing to orient around. It's like, oh, let's add a ring. Like, let's take one away. You know, mm -hmm. how about we try this position, or yeah. like, how does this feel? Mm -hmm. Like so often we don't ask, how does yes. that feel? Yes, that also comes to uh, the second topic that we're not going to talk about, yeah. that we really want to talk about is how to ask what we um, need and what we want in the bedroom. A lot of time it's just a little embarrassing or, you know, people are very shy to talk about. I'm from, uh, uh, you know, a traditional Asian family. I'm from China. So, so sometimes I, it's just really hard for me to talk about this with my parents uh even with my friends as well so yeah so when it comes to you know very intimate um questions and re uh, uh you know requirements like this it, it's also something that really needs to be brought up and then discuss and see what is the best way to you know have everyone to uh, especially for female to talk about what they want in the bedroom yeah yeah um well the first it's interesting also because normally when we feel like we want to talk but we can't, mm -hmm. it's generally because something's wrong, yeah. right? It's like you mm -hmm. want to say something but it, but you don't. You're there's a fear around. You know, it's like why don't we speak up? And and I'm curious to hear actually your yeah. thoughts on why people don't speak up. Yes, um, for me, I think is um, so in my culture, um, it's very. Um, let's say it's not very uh, like women isn't supposed to enjoy sex yeah. I mean if you you watch some let's say Japanese animation yeah. adult animation it's obvious that you can see that women often to be yeah. said no which is a very wrong message to send is yeah. so women supposed to be like oh no I don't want it I don't want it but okay fine and then I started to kind of enjoy it so that is the kind of routine going on in a lot of adult um animation or yeah. other, you know um japanese porn things like that so um i think that's also the reason why a lot of um men were taught to be liking women being shy about sex and it become a turn on and which is very wrong because oftentimes if you love someone making love with somebody of course you want the other want to uh, the other person to enjoy it as well yeah so, yeah yeah, it, it, yeah. That's, that's the reason why i think you know women are shy to talk about it absolutely no that's a really good point i mean we're definitely our, our the media and our surroundings don't inform a healthy sexual approach by any means yes, yes. uh and i think also we you know that's definitely completely suppressing female mm -hmm. pleasure and on the other hand like the other side of that pendulum is that the goal of sex is to have the best, biggest orgasms on the planet, which is sometimes <laughs> really hard to do when there's a pandemic or when we're stressed yeah. or when our yeah. body isn't working the way we want it to. It's like, yeah. where do these two things, there's like nothing in between, like anime mm -hmm. where consent is not given and like the best yeah. orgasm ever every time. It's yeah. like, you know, so I, I so appreciate that perspective. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the ways that is really helpful to start to understand our, like, our desire patterns mm -hmm. is to think of the context when we're turned on and think of the context when we're not. Because there's okay. this idea of differential desire where one partner might be turned on sometimes and then the other partner might not be. So yes. to start off on the same page or to figure out how to get on the same page, come up with um, a scale, maybe like a one to five scale, mm -hmm. thinking, saying, you know, am, how aroused am I mm -hmm. when I just wake up? Mm -hmm. How aroused am I when I go to sleep at night? When I'm bored? 
when yeah. I'm lonely. <laughs> totally. And, and literally go through each of these contexts mm -hmm. with a partner to, mm -hmm. to find the overlap when you are both turned on. Like, what are, the, what are the patterns that you guys are both turned on so that you can figure out a way to have a healthy approach to even starting mm. being intimate? Interesting. That's a really, really good, you know, idea. I've never heard about this. And, and I think the idea of, you know, having being in the same page, like scale it from one to 10, it, it's, it's very interesting. It's very, you know, I would love to try this. <laughs> but also, it's, it's like things that we don't even acknowledge ourselves. Like, yeah, I think most of us know if we're morning people or night people when it comes to sex. But, you know, when we're bored or when we're when we're on vacation or when we're celebrating or, yeah. you know, because sometimes when you're celebrating, there's too much excitement and you might not be turned on or, mm -hmm. or there's just yeah. there's so many. And, and then to, to but to define that is yeah. a tool. It's a tool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you look like you had to say something. <laughs> I just get no, so excited no. about this stuff. Yeah, no, no, I totally love it. I, I, I love that, um, you know, we can so, you know, I, I love how you're excited to talk about this. I'm really excited to talk about this as well. And then I just love how, you know, we're talking about this in social media, which is also like a really important thing to, uh, you know, spread an important message. I think the method you just mentioned is really great. Another question for me is that, um, oftentimes, um, we would like to use, you know, tools to help us to get what we want. Yeah. Apart from, we just talked about, you know, how do we express to the other, uh, to your partner about how you want to have sex or not want to have sex, you know, sure. but how, yes. how to make both of us at the same page. But mm -hmm. then how about when it's already started, maybe one of you want to use a tool or the other one doesn't want to use it, you sure. know? you know, how to express this, how to get onto the same page in yeah. this aspect as well, like during sex, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have a couple, I have a couple of thoughts on that. And I appreciate you asking. So mm -hmm. one of the ways and like specific techniques is called like, it's you think of it as a sandwich, you say mm -hmm. something positive, and then you say something constructive, and then you say something positive. Mm -hmm. So like, I really enjoy having sex with you. Uh, I've been feeling lately that uh, I'm uncomfortable when this happens, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really excited to try out this thing. It's mm -hmm. like, it's kind of like the, the, <laughs> like the positive, constructive, positive, mm -hmm. uh, and that way it doesn't feel like it's as heavy mm -hmm. for both people. Mm, understood. Yeah. That, that's, that's really, that's a great point. That's a great point. The, the sandwich, you know, construction, like the, the way it is, it, it, it's such an interesting um, way I've never thought of it that way. Uh, I think it's definitely it, it's it sounds like something that's really helpful. Um, oftentimes we just mentioned about painful sex. Mm -hmm. So when it's something not comfortable, uh, how do we you know? Is there any tips that you have or you yes. you you think that would be helpful to tell the other partner? Because yeah. sometimes uh, whether or not it's for girls or the, or for guys, and then. They will see the other partner working really hard, um, yeah. doing something, and then, but then they're actually not liking it. We saw yeah. that in movies all the time because a lot of times we learn how to have sex in movies. Uh, and they don't tell you anything. Yes, in movies, a they lot of times, it it, yes, it's <laughs> just for their story. You know, they always just, just, get, yeah. just, just, you know, rush into the door and then you throw each other's clothing away and then you just like keep grabbing each other so it's like wrestling <laughs> so, it's so uh, yeah it's yeah, also, yeah. It's, yeah when i watch it i'm like how is that comfortable that that sounds like, awful, horrible like you throw each other on the wall you know on the ground and that looks like it hurts so well, like professional so, wrestling like yes professional yes wrestling. <laughs> exactly exactly so that's also something that uh, uh, we need to talk about is in real yeah. life sex when yeah. it's not comfortable. Yeah. How do you tell the other, uh, how do you tell your partner without ruining, you know, the... Just ruining the moment or offending them. Yeah. Yes, so yes, yes, more yes, exactly. Ideas. Yeah, totally. So, uh, and one of the things that's interesting is that we assume, we assume that if we say something, it's going to be received poorly. Exactly. Okay, but when we've done studies with Ona and we ask, 
when you bring up on it, how does the partner respond? Mm -hmm. They so appreciate it because when we don't say something, if I'm, if I'm in a sex doing something sexually and I don't tell my mm -hmm. partner, like I didn't speak up for 10 years, which means that my partner couldn't do anything to help. They, I left them completely powerless. And meanwhile, yeah. the whole point of having sex is to work together and to enjoy each other. And mm -hmm. if one person's not being genuine about that, then the, it, it's apparent, whether we know it or not, the other person knows. Yes. So, so first coming from the perspective that speaking up helps them. Yes. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, you guys are working on this thing together. And when you both know how to address it, it does get better and you feel like you solved a puzzle. Like, <laughs> this thing works and it's awesome now. Like, let's do that more. Yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> so the one, another thing with like bringing it up when something is painful is to make sure to use I language, right? Mm -hmm. So it's knowing that pain during sex is no one's fault. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really, really important. It's not the person who has the pain. It's not mm -hmm. the person who is penetrating either. A lot of people are quick to point a finger at men. It's not their fault. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're feeling something, speak from the I perspective or the we perspective. It's mm -hmm. not like when you do this, you cause this thing for me mm -hmm. because that doesn't help. It's very much um, when we're doing this position or when we're doing this thing, I feel like I, I feel like this physical sensation or I feel sometimes I feel bad about myself. Mm. And when we talk about that from a place of vulnerability, like mm -hmm. sometimes when, when you do this thing, or no, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> um, nobody heard that. <laughs> yeah. Like what, during this activity, I feel disappointed in myself because my body's not doing what I want it to. Mm. Oh yes, I think that's, I think everyone would have experienced uh, the same kind of feeling. So like uh, maybe the, your partner uh, is doing great, he's enjoying it, but maybe he feel that you're not enjoying as much as he did and then they feel bad and you feel bad. And then it's, it's, you know, it just gets not, it's just, it's something that's supposed to be enjoyable. And yeah. then- that's that's why like we're here that we we really not need to figure out with our partner exactly how we feel and how we want and you know how to get there yeah yeah absolutely so speaking from the emotional side as well it's really helpful mm -hmm. because you assume that if, if you're having sex with someone they care about you and if mm -hmm. like if you want to have this conversation mm -hmm. and they're willing to have it like if, if they're not willing to have this conversation they're not worth having sex with like let's just start yeah. there um, yeah and then saying that if, if something makes us feel sad or, or uncomfortable, they, they probably will care and want to know that. So yes, it's really cool to speak up from that, from a place of confidence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, another idea for, about, about how to bring up painful sex or adjustments is um, letting know that your partner, you and your partner aren't alone. Mm -hmm. So I know this is kind yes. of a funny one. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a bit like, and sometimes people make this, like sometimes people make up stories, but it's really nice to bring up like, hey, I was talking to my friend, Jesse, and they were going through this thing. And like, this is how they dealt with it. Mm. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. Those other people are doing that thing. Like maybe, maybe that applies to us too. <laughs> like it's, it's yes. kind of dodgy, but, mm -hmm. but the truth is that other people are going through exactly the same stuff mm -hmm. and um the feeling of not being alone is really powerful mm -hmm. uh, for both partners yeah yes yes that's totally i totally agree with that um for me uh it's i think the the all of these questions being unfolded here means a lot because i've heard so many you know from uh you know we we have a blog in nanocare called the plot so we talk about you know everything that's uh, all the way from, you know, uh, menstrual problems and then, you know, to, you know, sex, health and everything, right? So uh, oftentimes we got uh, received feedbacks from, you know, our reader, our blog readers, they, they also talk about, you know, the same kind of question where although we know a lot, we did a lot of research, we know a lot about, about menstrual health, um, we are so happy. Uh, that's why we connect with Ona is that um, 
we definitely need somebody that is like expert on sex health and then you know how to improve a sex life uh, yeah. as well yeah. and um so we, we just talked about doing sex how during do we sex. get to the same page yeah um, during sex how do you advocate for yourself mm -hmm. yes absolutely yes. and then how about after sex um i saw that um, in you know a lot of times is after sex um, how I have people ask me I have because I have a little sister that's a lot younger than me so okay. my sister actually asked me a interesting question is about you know how, how what is the correct reaction you know what you're supposed to do after sex right it, it there's the kind of it's kind of awkward and then you know can kind of feels embarrassed you, you, you guys just did something very intimate but you know how what what is the best thing to do after sex you know how to do a little summary <laughs> about yeah 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 oh my god you know? yes what do you like or not like you know yeah 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 like that. I, th I think that's also something very interesting you know to discuss as well <laughs> oh my god okay, totally to your thoughts. yes yes totally oh my god a thousand times yes so there are a couple of <laughs> things i was actually just reading about a study a recent study that came out that that asked people about their relationship and sexual satisfaction and what mm -hmm. contributed to their relationship and sexual satisfaction. Yes. And it wasn't w the sex that they were having. It wasn't what they were doing during sex. It wasn't even the amount of orgasms they were having. Mm -hmm. It had to do with them cuddling after oh, sex. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, who doesn't love the cuddling? <laughs> yeah. And what that opens up is mm -hmm. the importance of being a friend to the person yes. that you're having sex with and mm -hmm. having that open dialogue and also prioritizing sex, making, making a point of, of, of connecting and mm -hmm. having a dialogue around it. Yes. Um, so those two things, actually, it was really interesting uh, because yes. so many people like focus on how big the orgasm was or how they did whatever they did or how off, you know, it's like, there's so much focus on the sex piece, but it's actually the emotional piece that yes. creates that feeling of satisfaction long term. Yes. So, but then also, uh, what we're talking here, it's about, you know, being with our um, partner that's emotionally connected, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about when this happens to someone that you're not as emotionally connected? Right. Yeah. This is also something. I, I, this is also a big taboo. Is like, how about you two just wanna enjoy sex? Yeah. You know? How about if it's that kind of sex partners? What What is the you know the best way to do the after sex? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and it so depends on what the dynamic is. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's and and how you're feeling on a given day because. Honestly, even if it just, it is just a short-term sexual engagement, mm -hmm. it can still feel really connected. It yes. can still, you know, it can still feel like incredibly awkward. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know, even if you're with a, a person long-term, it can feel awkward. Like all of the things yes, that you can feel is. on a one-night stand, can you can still feel long-term? Um, yes. I really like what you said about like the debrief. There's actually a really wonderful product called the Sex Journal. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's a it's a really beautiful journal, and it and it helps you write oh, down like how that was, and okay. like what were you celebrating, like what maybe it didn't feel so good, and mm -hmm. then and then the other person fills it out. You fold it over so you can't see it, and then the other person fills their out, and then you read it. Um, uh -huh. That's a really that's nice way to to foster dialogue after intimacy for sure. Okay. Um, okay. Sex dialogue, like like how to say like a sex, a journal. sex journal. I actually mm -hmm. really like this idea. I think it's very interesting. It's like writing down your dream. <laughs> yes, I guess or like a daily journey. The morning daily pages. journey. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that does sounds like a that's definitely a very interesting way. I I, I totally love it. So um, uh, the, you how about during the quarantine? <laughs> um, how about you well, spend so much time with this person and you guys have tried everything you could have to think of and then do you feel like I'm, I think some people may feel that like constantly doing the same kind of thing or similar kind of thing gets a little boring so um, I, I, I think what I'm asking is that 
um, how to, you know, encourage each other to try new things. Yeah. Um, one of the activities that I really like, it's called the three minute game. That's mm. really fun. And it's so mm. simple. It's so <laughs> simple. You literally ask the other partner, how mm. would you like me to touch you for three minutes? Mm. And then the other partner answers. And then you set a timer for three minutes and you do it. <laughs> Interesting. It, it's awesome. It like literally, okay, so, and sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm with a lovely partner um, mm -hmm. and sometimes we want to feel, sometimes we're already feeling like saucy and, and like we want this to be <laughs> an intimate activity and sometimes we're stressed mm -hmm. and we just, I'll just like recently, both of us just wanted back and neck massages. Mm -hmm. And what that led to was just stopping the sensation of feeling stressed in our heads so we could just be physically present with one another. And as mm -hmm. soon as that happens, then lots of other things become possible. Mm. When we approach sex from our heads and this very like routine perspective, uh -huh. without saying what we want, then you end up doing the same thing and it's so limited. <laughs> Versus when one person can say yeah. like, I would love for you to just like, use your fingertips to touch mm -hmm. from my belly button to my mid thigh for three uh, minutes. Really? <laughs> That's very interesting. Or, okay. you could, or you could do like, um, or you could, I would love for you to massage like somewhere specific for three, and three minutes goes by so fast. But it also- Do you put a timer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And generally- You, you do? So like you, you set up a timer in, in your phone? Oh, for sure. There's a, no, I mean, so that's actually the most important part is okay. because, because it's a very safe container to mm. try something very specific. So it's like, I would like oh, for you to touch okay. this part of my inner thigh. And you're like, maybe I'm going to, and then you discover all the different kinds, parts of your body that you mm. didn't pay attention to by default. Cool. That's, that's so cool. That's, that's totally like, that's very interesting. I would love yeah. to I, I would love to do like a recap of <laughs> all the points that you just mentioned today. Yeah. And totally pose it to everybody. That I think this will be great for everybody, you know, to actually try it on. And then I, I think they, this will be really helpful yeah. when everybody yeah. stays home. Yes. Also, a another thing that uh, while we're at home, because tensions are running high, and I feel like I've heard of a lot of like stress conversations that like where people say things they don't mean to say or they're really you know there's this energy in really strange ways um one of the easy ways to bring up something that you want in bed is to start from a neutral place so to bring up something that's outside of both of you that's neutral and objective so like i read this article that said 75 percent of women have painful sex in their lifetime or like i saw this you know, I saw like Ona on uh, online, and it says this thing that sounds mm -hmm. really cool. Then yes. all of a sudden, it's it's not finger pointing. It's not mm -hmm. opinionated in any mm -hmm. way. It's it's something that that sparks a conversation that both people can have. So I found that to be very helpful as well, especially right now when mm -hmm. everything is so emotionally charged. Yes, totally. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely agree. It's. It's uh, it, it definitely really helpful. Well, thank you so much. I am oh, really sorry. happy about you know our conversation today. I I feel like we have so much more we could talk about. Okay. <laughs> we should totally do this again and then talk about something more. You know, some I'm sure there are more topics. And then um, you know whoever uh, thanks for everyone who's watching. Whoever have questions, always feel free to you know message us. And then yeah. we could, whatever you want to listen to or question that you have, we could totally, you know, start another live, you know, totally. next time. And then we can talk about it. And then um, for, uh, I'm, I'm really happy. Thank you, Emily, yeah, <laughs> for answering the questions. All the tips to get today is really helpful. And then for a nanocare audience, this is, um, you know, welcome to check out Ona. They are a very empowering um, sex tool. 
um, for men and women. Mm -hmm. And then for Onat's audience, um, feel free to check out NanoCare. We are okay. organic fem care product that's developed to naturally relieve menstrual discomfort. And thanks everyone for watching. Thank I'm you. So grateful. I'm and so we'll make happy. sure to share share this to story when we're done, so it stays up for a little while. Yes, yes. Okay. And then um, we will also save the video and then make sure that we upload it to our IGTV. So whoever want to check back, they're able to. Amazing.